All right, welcome back here inside the TCO studios. Gabe Henderson here alongside Ben Lieber. And Ben, offensive lineman is the talk today. Top offensive lineman in the 2021 draft. We know the Vikings, they have addressed the defensive side of the ball to the best that they could yeah. in free agency. So all eyes are pointing to the offensive line group. And I mean, this is a, a loaded class. We know it's kind of top heavy, but it's a, it's a deep class. But starting with Panay Sewell, Everyone is over is on top of him. A guy is 6'6", 325 pounds. I've been on record saying his film reminds me of Trent Williams College from Oklahoma. Yeah. But you don't feel the same way. <laughs> I, th I think I'm just being I think I'm just being overly picky with this. And, okay. and you know, when I when I looked at the offensive linemen and I was ranking them, it's not like it's not that I don't like Penny Sewell. Mm -hmm. I think he's a tremendous athlete. He's extremely violent. Um, you know, he's got great hands, um, athleticism that you're looking for. But, you know, there's something about his game to me when I look at, you know, specifically with, with Vikings colored glasses on. Like I'm looking at through the perspective of what I think the, the best value is for the Vikings. And I have him, me personally, as my, my second overall offense alignment because I think there are times where don't, don't mistake movement and activity for production. Mm. You watch his game and it's very active. Hands are very active, feet are very active. But then you, you watch the actual end play and it's like, that's an average play. But he makes it look very violent and very productive because there's a lot of action with his hands. He's very vocal. You can see him talking to the offensive lineman. Um, you know, he's a presence on the field and I think there's value to that. But I also think that he gets over his skis a little bit. He plays a little bit out of control. He plays a little bit out of balance. Now, can you rein that in? For sure. Good coaching can rein that in. He can have more of a controlled aggression. But as of right now, uh, I think there are other guys that play with as much tenacity and production, but play more under control. Mm. A guy that you are pretty high on is the guy next on our list, Rashawn Slater from Northwestern. I know you're high on Elijah Vera Tucker. We'll get, him, get to him next. But Rashawn Slater, why, why are you so big on him? Well, he's, he's just athletic, man. Okay. He's an athletic freak. And, you know, you talk about lateral movement, the ability to pass off twists, which um, we had problems with a couple times. Um, this ability to, to recognize something, help with an inside hand, and still, you know, very easily and casually, he makes a lot of lateral movements look easy. And, and I think that his hand strength is outstanding. I mean, when he latches on, um, you know, the, the game against Chase Young, two years ago. And I know that you, you can't talk about him unless you reference that game. Yeah, was, and, yeah. and it's not just hyperbole. You turn the game on and like he shut him down. Every time that Chase Young was on that side, he shut him down and made Chase Young look silly sometimes. Mm -hmm. So he has that that ability. Um, but I but I I'm hoping and I know that his pro day numbers were a lot better that when he took the year off, he worked on his lower body strength because his 2019 film to me, that's the thing that he lacked. He didn't always have the most consistent drive with his legs in the run game. Yes, he could get to the second level. Um, too many times he didn't have much of an anchor. You know, he played against uh, AJ Epinesa versus yeah. Iowa, who's more of a power defensive end, and got worked. You know, flat out got worked. You know, he, he let Epinesa into his chest, got pushed back a bunch of times. Yeah. And so you're, I'm hoping that in 2020, taking the time off, he, he found more of an anchor and married that footwork and balance um, and speed with more of a, a leg drive and more of an anchor. Elijah Vera Tucker, mm -hmm. a lot of experts have him, you know, maybe going to the middle or, or later round in the draft. You like this guy a lot. So before I pose the question of what he brings to the table, because I know you love this guy, if he is sliding down, mm -hmm. do you trade back to try to get a second round pick to select Elijah Vera Tucker in the first round? If you're confident that you can get Elijah Vera Tucker later than 14 and you find a suitable partner mm -hmm. and you can get a second round pick, yes, absolutely do it. Because then it's a win-win situation. Then you're getting the, you're getting a, my top ranked offensive lineman, not that that matters, <laughs> <laughs> to Rick Spillman and his group. Yeah. But you're getting a top offensive lineman and you're picking up a second round pick that you didn't have before. So if you could do that, 100% yes. Why well, see your top offensive lineman? He's my top off offensive lineman because versatility you know I look I, I'm putting more weight and again I ranked my guys based on what I think the Vikings needs are and so I put more weight on guys that can play more than one position and he was an all-american at left guard he was he was the pac 12s number one offensive lineman last year at left tackle mm -hmm. so he's proficient at both 
Um, I think all the things that you look at at Pene Sewell, he does the same thing, but plays with better balance. Yeah. And I think he plays with more control. I think his hand punch, his inside hand punch is more consistent than a lot of these guys. And so I think technically, from a technical standpoint, I think he's already polished, ready to go. Mm. Insert him at guard if you feel like he's a guard, and insert him at tackle, and he can play tackle as well. You just brought, you brought me to my next question. Like, where do you put him at, left guard or left tackle? Because he played both in college. Well, I think the, the one thing that people say about him and, and a few other guys is maybe arm length. Does he have the, the, the adequate arm length that you look for for a left tackle? Now, he performed at a high level uh, in the Pac-12 playing left tackle. Does that translate to the NFL? I think it's one of those things you, you go and you have him go against Daniil Hunter in practice. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the one, the, one of the longest arms in the league. You know, can he be productive and shut, shut that guy down? If he can, then you gotta be pretty confident he can handle the rest of the NFL. Daniil Hunter versus a 21 year old. I'm taking Daniil Hunter every time. <laughs> I would too. But, <laughs> but it's but as far as gauging his, his separation and his punch right. and how to how to combat the, the long arms, it'd be a good uh, good barometer. And I think it'll only make him better, right? Seeing that oh, in practice. And I mean that's what you need. And a guy who's gonna make I think any pretty much any other team, any team in this NFL better is a guy in Landon Dickerson from uh, University of Alabama. Yeah. Just talking about just national championship experience. Uh, just, I mean, we know the Saban way, Alabama. If you go there, you're pretty much already NFL ready. We have a Remington Award winner yeah, on our good. roster right yeah. now. Landon Dickerson won the Remington Award last year. Your thoughts on this guy? Well, if his medicals check out, then then uh, that's he's he's he may be better at guard than some of the guards coming out, you know, and, and again, position flexibility. He's six foot six. I mean, you don't see that in a lot of centers. And right. so he could play up and down the line. And I love his game. You know, when he was at Florida State, every, all three of his years were, were marred with injury. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the biggest question mark with him. If the health part of it checks out with his knees and all this other stuff, <laughs> He's a phenomenal player. Like you, you watch him, he he plays with the right amount of toughness. Um, he 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 makes every call on the offensive line. You know that it was one of the most um, productive offenses in all of college football in history, and and he set all those guys up. You know, so you know that he's smart. He can handle that from from a cerebral standpoint. And then you watch him how tough he is, how he finishes blocks, how he can move, how a lot of times they moved him out. He was a he was a pulling center a lot of times. Like it's you don't crazy. you know, pulling a center is not usually part of your of your play calling. Right. You know, it's in the schemes, but mm -hmm. it's every once in a while. You usually pull your guards and your tackles. They pulled this guy a lot because he's so athletic in space and he can move against these second level linebackers and safeties. And so I got a lot of value in wherever wherever he ends up, whether he's a center for somebody or a guard for somebody, he's he's a heck of a talent. Him and his teammate, if you see the last line on this this uh, list right here, it says he shared the SEC Jacobs blocking trophy with yes. his teammate Alex yes. Leatherwood. Alex, Le Alex Leatherwood is the next guy up on our list. Your thoughts on him? So Leatherwood actually is my third um, ranked offensive lineman, and I don't think that he gets enough love. Mm -hmm. um, an All-American at right guard and an All-American at left tackle. What, what, what yeah. more do you, you know, in, in the premier conference in college football, and, you know, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't have any red flags when it comes to character. Like, I just, for the life of me, I can't understand why he's not talked about more. You know, he's got the height. He's got the weight. Um, does he have, to me, does he have a little bit of issues when he's dealing with speed rushers? Sure. Um, I think that can be fixed with technique. That can be fixed with just understanding who you're going against. Um, but you want to talk about a guy that can create separation with his hands, you know, has the hand strength, um, has enough lateral movement to handle twists and and of that nature, um, plays with great body position. You know, for being six foot five, he really knows how to drop his hips. He knows how to bend his knees. Uh, that's the first thing I noticed was what he, he's a natural knee bender. And you want to see that out of, out of all offensive linemen, but he does it very, very well. So, you know, is the speed rushing aspect of it maybe a little bit of an issue to work on? Sure. I mean, all these guys have something to work on, but all American in two different spots, <laughs> you know, I, I think that he's a, he's a tremendously talented guy. And, uh, you know, again, if he's there at 14, and let's just say that all three of these, let's say Sewell and, and Vera Tucker and Leatherwood happen to be all available at 14. <laughs> I don't care what they, who they pick or who they go for. If they trade down, uh, that's that's the best situation to be in. And I guess you know we'll get out of here with this. I think all of this depends on what do you do with a guy like Ezra Cleveland. 
I mean, he was, came in as a left tackle. You tried him at left guard for a little bit and then found his home at right guard. Now knowing, now that he knows the game, now that he has an understanding of how yeah. to move, what do you do with him to, to help benefit whoever we draft on the offensive line? Have him compete. Figure it out. I love it. I mean, I don't think that you have to pigeonhole these players. Okay. Um, you know, the more you can do, the, the better chances you're going you're gonna to make yourself uh, have more longevity in this league, and you're going to help your team out. So I, I say for all of these guys, and that's why I put so much weight on Vera Tucker, because have him compete at every position. Mm. You know, maybe his best spot is left guard. And then he's not a, he's not a, and, then, and maybe let Ezra Cleveland with that matchup and they, and they work well together, maybe he then slides out to the left tackle spot or vice versa. But you give your offensive line options with some very talented players. Well, we talk quarterbacks, we talk O linemen. Being, being a former linebacker, we now get to talk linebackers next. So, Vikings fans, stay tuned for our next edition of our NFL draft prospect profile.